Nice shirt. Hey, gotta represent. That's right. I finally had somebody ask what it means. Oh yeah, what'd you say? It was the guy who runs the desk area at my gym. He's like, what does that stand for? Like, oh, it's my sister's uh, YouTube channel, Every Disney Movie Entered. And it's like, oh, cool. I've had people at work, I had a customer go, Ed me? What's Ed me? <laughs> and I was like, oh, every Disney movie ever. And he just went, you're one of those. <laughs> and I was like, rude. Oh my gosh. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Chess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I have Eric. He's back. And we're going to talk about Atlantis Milo's Return. Atlantis Milo's Return is a 2003 animated directed video release. It is directed by Victor Cook, Toby Shelton, and Ted Stones. Animation supervisor is Romy Garcia. Editor is John Royer. And the music is by Don Harper. The film is written by Thomas Hart, Henry Gilroy, Kevin Hopps, Tad Stones, Steve Englehart, and Marty Eisenberg. The film stars James Arnold Taylor as Milo, Cree Summer as Keita, John Mahoney as Whitmore, Jacqueline Oberdors as Audrey... Don Novello as Vinny, Corey Burton as Mole, Phil Morris as Sweet, Florence Stanley as Packard, and Frank Welker as Abby. It's a lot, sorry. Could immediately tell, based on the animation quality, that this was supposed to be a television series turned movie because the movie did bad. So they said, oh, well, we're not going to make a TV show now if the movie did bad, bad. So we're going to just release this directed video sequel that is a compilation of the episodes we did have. Um, and the animation quality, not up to snuff with the original Atlantis, which is common for a lot of these directed video sequels. Any thoughts on the animation? Reminds me a lot of the Aladdin television series. Very yep. similar in its style. The difference is Aladdin was better. <laughs> The Aladdin show, listen, it, it, it wasn't compared to the original Atlantan, Aladdin movie in terms of, you know, yeah. quality, but yeah. they at least put in an effort to make it compelling with, you know, certain new characters. Most of the same voice cast, aside from Robin Williams, of course, was a part of it. Whereas with this one, you could tell there were a lot of missing pieces in terms of the voice cast, but the animation style in general, you know, it was that typical style that you would expect from Aladdin, Little Mermaid, around that same time period. It is episodes strung together with like a very thin overarching plot. The three main episodes, uh, they face like a Kraken character, the second one. No, no, no. A Kraken. Didn't that drive you crazy? It drove me nuts. <laughs> I'm, uh, thanks for bringing that up because uh -huh. I forgot about it because I didn't like it. Um, and then the second one was like sand coyotes. And then the third one was Odin, basically, mm -hmm. um, with Ragnarok, which is hysterical to me, but... It, it is so different in tone to the original Atlantis. I think that's the part that's like really tripping me up. Cause like Aladdin and Little Mermaid were all in the same tone as their movies, like these television, or the Hercules TV show was mm -hmm. also in the same tone as Hercules. Where this, like Atlantis was kind of like, yes, it had comedy, but it was kind of like a very serious movie. And in the show, like, they add Abby, that lizard dog thing, which, whatever. Admittedly, the idea of Abby was creative. I, you know, a, yeah. a dog born out of molten rock and can literally sit in fire and sleep in it as if it's Eats nothing. Eats rocks. Like, it's, that's it's a fascinating idea, fun. but he really didn't serve much of a purpose to the entire mm. show in general. And I think yeah. that was the problem that you have with the character. Yeah, and I also think just... If they were going to do a character like that in the first one, it would have been done completely differently. He could have been comedic relief, but he wouldn't have been how he was in this like TV show, cartoon, second film, whatever you want to call it. And it, it's very awkward. It reads like campy cartoon instead of like... It could have been a very fun adventure show in the same tone as the original Atlantis, but they just went a completely different route with it, which is definitely why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. In my opinion. The original Atlantis catered to both adults and children, and I think that's one of the reasons it was a good movie. You know, I yes, it didn't do as well as it probably could have, but it was still a really solid flick. Whereas this one, you could clearly tell they were catering to very young children. Yeah. And that 
that plot, those characters just didn't fit that time, type of tonal shift, and I think that's why it didn't work. Yes. I also don't know how I feel about them like deciding so quickly at the end of this movie to just share Atlantis with the rest of the world. Yeah. That felt like I would have been fine with that, obviously, Atlantis rejoining the world, whatever, but like all the other stuff they did didn't feel like it was going to be in true contribution to like getting Atlantis to come up and be part of the world again. And that just felt like that could have been such an incredibly interesting movie mm -hmm. if they treated it in the same way they treated the first movie, which is like, how can we get Atlantis back up to the, like, and release it back into the, like, world and share that with people. It also could have been a great overarching plot for the first season of a television show. Right. In that you could produce it gradually over the course of the episodes as sort of the stringing plot between what you're, what you're doing. Instead, you used only these three episodes with very thin connections to each other and then arrive at this conclusion at the end and it's like wait what why because there was really wasn't much of an explanation a good explanation i should say into why this makes sense to so, sort of start sharing atlantis with the world considering what happened in the first movie all these people come down out of a lot of these people come down out of greed to you mm -hmm. know steal atlantis's power and all that sort of stuff so when you see right. that kind of a shift drastic shift yeah it kind of annoys you and what makes the viewing experience that much worse for what it was yeah i also think like there wasn't enough setup for Kata to be willing to leave Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Like, Milo stayed for a reason, and they've obviously been working on Atlantis, and I feel like there should have been, like, Kata was the one that was like, yeah, let's go. Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, he stayed in Atlantis, for, so you could be queen of Atlantis, and now you're going to be like, nah, let's leave yeah. to go figure out stuff, which I just felt was also weird. Anyway. And I, and I really don't think they explained the backstory of her father as well as they probably should have because it felt like that's what they were trying to go with in explaining her se her sense of changing her mind from protecting Atlantis to sharing Atlantis. Yeah. They tried, but I don't think they really delved into the details as much as they probably could have and should have. What do you think of it? Didn't care for it. I mean... When you compare it to modern Disney sequels, it's not even in the same oh, stratosphere. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, th this is back before Disney started taking sequels seriously. You had The Little Mermaid 2, which was better than this one. And, you know, Aladdin Return of, the J Return of Jafar never went to theaters, but it was still a very solid sequel compared to this. This was... <laughs> They, if they wanted to do a TV show, they should have just done a TV show and not tried to pass this off as a quote-unquote movie. Because yeah. it's not. It's not that. It's, it's. I compared it to basically three episodes of Scooby-Doo with the Atlantis veneer masked over it. You know, when you see stuff like that, it's really difficult to take it seriously as a movie and yeah. more than just... You know, trying to paint Atlantis over another TV show you're trying to pass off on the Disney Channel. Yeah. If, uh, what frustrates me is like it feels like we're moving past these like super episodic direct -to video sequels because I mean the array of direct -to video sequels I've had is crazy because you know like Return of Jafar is an overarching plot like it is one mm -hmm. through line plot it is not episodic same with the third one King of Thieves yes which I don't think I watched it I did watch you sure? I figured you would have watched it by now. Yeah, I think I did. I don't know. I watched it. It's a good movie, by the way. <clears throat> anyway. For what it was. But then, Lion King 2, an incredible sequel. Yes. Little Mermaid 2, an incredible sequel. Cinderella 2, episodic. Mm -hmm. But not a planned TV show. Right. It was just episodic, which was weird. Was three, like, separate plots. Tons of recess direct video movies mm -hmm. are a collection of episodes. There's been so many things that are a collection of episodes passed off as, like, a full flame. Tarzan and Jane. Mm -hmm. Horrible. Like, it's frustrating to me, and I'm like, why can't you just, like, come up with an actual overarching plot? And, like, because those would be way more interesting. And I agree that this was not good. 
It feels like the less successful the original movie was, the less effort they would put into the sequels, like yeah. Atlantis, like Tarzan, which is really unfortunate because you would think they would view it as an opportunity to sort of get people more interested in said, you know, movie franchise that may not have had original success. It would have been a great opportunity to maybe then get these people more interested in the original and therefore save what you were, what, you know, wasn't initially a success, but, you know, unfortunately media companies tend not to treat it that way. Well, what's crazy to me is, like, they have the proof that, like, direct-to-video movies were doing well. That's why they keep doing them. Mm -hmm. Like, Lion King 2, I think, is potentially still the best-selling direct-to-video movie ever. Mm -hmm. And then Emperor's New Groove didn't do that well in the theater, but then was the top most-sold DVD the following year because people, re like, rediscovered it because I think it... It might have come out like around 9-11, so it didn't do well. Or they had to push it because of 9-11 and then it competed with something else then. Right. Bad timing. <clears throat> right, exactly. <clears throat> so like they have the proof that direct -to video sequels could save a movie even potentially. So like, yeah, okay, maybe Atlantis didn't do as well as they wanted in the theater, even though it did fine. Mm -hmm. But their Milo's return could have, like, reinvigorated a mm -hmm. fandom or like made the kids want to see the first one and like all this kind of stuff but this direct video sequel is not it yeah it, they they clearly outside of the you know the, the voice cast which i think there were a lot of voices i recognize and i really yeah. like and i think they really could have done well a lot of them came back yeah I, a few few of the characters came back, but a lot of the heavy hitters probably weren't there, especially Michael J. Fox. Yeah, Michael J. Fox was not my so, one. But know. Cree Summer was Kida. Mm -hmm. Phil Morris was sweet. Uh, Jacqueline Abradors was Audrey. Like, a bunch of them came back. Yeah. Corey Burton was Mole. Yeah, it was a solid cast. I really like the effort <clears throat> they tried to put into it, but they weren't really given much to work with, and when that happens, yeah. it's just really unfortunate. Yeah, I agree. Do you have anything else? Not off the top of my head, unfortunately. This movie didn't really give me much to work with. No, I hear you. Yeah, that's everything for me, too. I didn't have a lot to say about it. It's not that great, guys. Um, what would your final rating be? Four out of ten. Wow. For what? For Krakens. rocks. <laughs> rocks. Oh, rocks <laughs> is good. Uh, minus three rocks out of ten. Ouch. Yeah. It wasn't good. Uh, our total movie count is. Paradise and Cry Count are still the same. Although she did. I think I counted that in the first one, though. Probably. Kita talks about her dead father, but I think if it doesn't happen in the first one, I think it's talked about in the first one and I counted it. Okay, great. Paradise and Cry Count are still the same. If you want to keep up with a movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. Follow Eric on Twitter. He's. At Eric Lambert1. Oh, well, it'll be right here. Oh, thanks for that. Yeah. So we don't have to remember what, how, what it is. I mean, even though I know what it is. I'm just being polite. Thank you. <laughs> um, follow him. He posts mostly sports articles, but then he's also funny. So follow him. Uh, and then thanks for being here. Patreon this month until the 31st. You get a tier or you get a benefit from the tier above you, no matter what tier you join. So right now you could join Patreon at the Pluto tier, which is $1 for the entire month and get access to daily trivia questions. It's super fun over there. Go do it. They're boppy, okay? The trivia questions are great. I help. Yeah. Merch is 25% off with the code PET600. Be sure to buy merch this month until the 31st. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, and I'm not in charge of your life. You are a shitty you, and don't be... Odin? The Kraken? <laughs> Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who... Don't be this movie about it, honestly. It wasn't that good. <laughs> We did it. Thanks, Bum. Sure. Happy to help. Yay. Pooh Bear. Pooh -poo Bear. Pooh Bear. It's me and it's you. Oh, wait, I have to film. Oh, I'm still recording. <laughs>